In this lesson, you will learn what significant figures are, how to determine the number of significant figures in a measurement, and how significant figures relate to scientific notation. Here's the definition of significant figures. When you are looking at the numbers in a measurement, significant figures are the numbers that have actually been measured, and that would include your estimated digit. So you might be thinking, well, what kind of numbers wouldn't be measured? And that would usually apply to uh, zeros that are just holding place value. In fact, the rules for determining significant figures uh, used to look like this. And most of them were about zeros in determining if they were significant or not. Are they holding place or were they actually measured or estimated digits? But luckily, you do not have to learn all of these rules. Here is the rule that we are going to use to determine the number of significant figures in a measurement. It might sound a little funny, but once I'm done explaining, hopefully it will make sense. The rule is dot right and if not left. It's actually two rules in one. Dot right refers to if the measurement has a decimal point. Then we will count to the right. We're going to start counting at the first non-zero number, so any number other than zero. And once we start counting, we're not going to stop counting until we run out of digits in the measurement. So in 1.230 nanometers, we have a decimal point. So we're going to count to the right, meaning we're going to start on the left and work our way to the right. So the number one is a non-zero number. That will be our first significant figure. The 2 will be our second, the 3 will be our third, and the 0 will be our fourth. So this measurement has four significant figures, or four sig figs for short. In the measurement 0 0.0023 grams, it has a decimal point, so we're going to start on the left and work our way to the right, dot right. But the first zero, or the first number, is a zero. And so we're going to skip that. We're going to skip the second zero and the third zero as well. We start counting at the first non zero number, which is the number two. And then there's a three. And so that's going to be two sig figs. In 123.401, we have a decimal point. We're going to start on the left, work our way to the right. The first number is a non-zero number. This measurement has six significant figures. And finally, we have 10 degrees Celsius, 10 with a decimal point. And the reason that it's there is so that that zero is significant. And this measurement has two significant figures. If not left is the second part of the rule. This would be for measurements that don't have decimal points. Usually we would like our measurements to have decimal place values. But just in case, uh, we can cover all the bases here. Um, with no decimal point, we're going to count to the left. So if not left, if no decimal point, count to the left. We're still going to start counting at the first non-zero number. And once we start counting, we won't stop until we run out of numbers. Now with this measurement 5,000 liters, we have no decimal point. And so we're going to count to the left. The first number is a zero. The second number is a zero, and the third number is a zero. So we're going to skip all those. That leaves the five, and that's one significant figure. In 14,000, uh, you'll see something that looks a little curious. There's a, a bar over one of the zeros, and there's still no decimal point, so we're still going to count to the left. But that bar is going to make that zero significant, meaning it was measured. The zero in the ones place and the zero in the tens place were not measured. They are just holding place. But that zero, because it's got that line over it, means that it's significant. 
and we have three significant figures in this measurement. Now don't get carried away with that bar over the zero. Uh, we never use that in decimal place values. In 114,210 kilograms, no decimal point, count to the left, and the first number is a zero, so we're going to skip it. We've got five significant figures. And then finally, in 101 milliliters, no decimal point, count to the left, one, two, three. So three sig figs. Please take a few minutes to determine the number of significant figures in each of the following measurements. Pause the video now and then come back and check your answers. In 0 0.090 centiliters, we have a decimal point, so we're going to count to the right. The first two digits are zeros, so we're going to skip those. And then we've got a 9 and a 0, so that's two significant figures. If you think about this measurement, it is so small that we don't have any tenths. So that zero is just holding place to push the nine and the zero out into the proper place value. Um, 6,150, no decimal point, so we count to the left, if not left. This one has three significant figures. 900.0 meters has a decimal point, dot right. Four significant figures. 0 0.009, decimal point, count to the right, one significant figure. So only one measured digit, but it's a, a pretty good digit to have measured, the thousands place. 0 0.90, decimal point, count to the right, two significant figures. 0 0.90, think about the significance of that zero. Without it, only one significant figure, and you're saying that you only measure to the tenths place as opposed to the hundredths place in point nine zero. Six million seven hundred thousand, no decimal point, so we're going to count to the left. And normally we would skip all those zeros, but um, that bar is making the hundredths place significant, so that's where we'll start counting. That will have five significant figures. And finally, 54,000 decimeters, no decimal point, count to the left. None of those zeros have been marked significant, so we skip all of those and two significant figures. Measurements like these are very poor. Those zeros are just holding place. So our measuring instrument was not able to measure the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place. Our measuring instrument only started measuring at the thousands place, and that's our estimated digit in this measurement. So this isn't a very good measurement at all, and not a very precise measuring tool was used. Sometimes it's necessary to write a number in scientific notation. We write numbers in scientific notation if they are very large or very small. It's a nice way to shorten it up. Um, we write scientific notation, like indicated here, 1.25 times 10 to the third grams. We never write an E instead of times 10. That's what your calculator does, but that's not acceptable for us. Within scientific notation, we can have positive powers of 10 or negative powers of 10. If the power of 10 is positive, think multiplication when you are attempting to take a number out of scientific notation. So in 1.25 times 10 to the third, 10 to the third is 1,000. So this is like 1.25 times 1,000. And if you have a negative power of 10, like 1.25 times 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative third is a thousandth. So this is 1.25 times a thousandth, or divided by a thousand. 
But whether you're taking numbers into or out of scientific notation, you want to make sure you always preserve the number of significant figures within the measurement. So we're going to take some numbers out of scientific notation and write them as ordinary numbers. We want to preserve our number of significant figures. And uh, all you need to do is look at this beginning part right here. And that will tell you how many sig figs. Um, most of the time you're going to see decimal points, so most of the time you'll be counting to the right, dot right. This has three significant figures, and so when we take this out of scientific notation, we still want to see three significant figures. With a negative power of 10 here, uh, we're going to move our decimal point to the left, because it's like we're dividing by 100. I don't want to just write 0.02, that's only one significant figure. I'm going to want to add in my zeros so I have my three significant figures. And I'll put some units on there. Okay, and 5.0 times 10 to the third. Uh, look right here. This is two significant figures. And so I want to see two significant figures in my answer. I have 10 to the third, so that's like multiplying by 1,000. We're going to move our decimal point to the right. Okay, and I want to have two significant figures, so I do not want to do this, put a decimal point at the end, because that would make it four. I'm going to put a bar over the zero in the hundreds place. That gives me my two significant figures, and the other two are just place values, uh, placeholders, so that we can uh, have all the digits in their proper place value. And next we're going to put some numbers into scientific notation. We want to preserve our number of significant figures. So if you just look at this first number here, decimal point, count to the right, three significant figures. We want to make sure we have three significant figures uh, once we're all done writing the number in scientific notation. And uh, we have a decimal point that we're going to want to move so that we have just a single digit uh, non-zero number in front of the decimal point. Okay, so we move it until the 4 is in front of the decimal point. So 4.5, and we want to have three significant figures, so 4.50 times 10, and then we moved it five places, so it's times 10 to the negative fifth. So we can take 4.5 and we can make it smaller, so we can divide um, to get our, our desired number there. In 15,000 meters, no decimal point, count to the left, three significant figures in that one. And when there is no decimal point in the number, of course, it's implied that it's at the end. So we want to move it so we have a single digit in front of the decimal point. So we want just the one in front of the decimal point. We want to include that zero so that we have three significant figures. And we moved it four places. And so we'll make that a positive power there because we want to take 1.5 and make it larger. So we want to multiply. Okay, finally, um, take a few minutes and um, write these numbers out in scientific notation, uh, ensuring that you preserve the number of significant figures. Pause the video here, and then you can check your answers when you're done. In our first measurement, we have only one significant figure. And so we're just going to have a 1 times 10 I think that's 8 places so times 10 to the negative 8th okay in the next one we have two significant figures I do 3.1 times 10 to the third In the next one, we have four significant figures. Times 10 to the negative first. Four significant figures in the next one. Times 10 to the negative third. And then we're going to uh, write these numbers as ordinary numbers. So three significant figures in 
Okay, make sure to put a bar over the zero. That's right there next to the two. The rest are just going to be placeholders. Four significant figures in 9.4. Four three zero. Okay, make sure to include that zero. Four significant figures in five point zero one zero. We still want to have four significant figures, so make that zero significant by either putting a bar over it or do a decimal point. And finally, well, four significant figures again. Put a bar over the zero in the tens place. So hopefully now you know what significant figures are, how to determine the number of significant figures in a measurement, and how to preserve the number of significant figures in a measurement when taking numbers in and out of scientific notation. If you don't feel confident that you know these things, please go back and rewatch this video.